in the past number of years, we have really expanded or embraced the rights of people who are trans and people who are non-binary and, and people who are, uh, prefer to use and feel more comfortable using and like they them pronouns, for example. And so Leah Thomas is a person who, you know, by all accounts has said, hey, I am, I'm, I'm now coming out of the closet in a different way. I'm really, I'm going to transition. And as a society, we have gotten to the place where we are saying, hey, this is okay. And most people increasingly are saying, that's fine. The opinion is, that's fine. It's great. You, should, you have the right to transition, and you have the right to be you, and great. So you were Leah Thomas, you were a man, and now you're a woman, and that will accept you as that. But it's not as simple as, okay, so now which bathroom do you use? Because Leah Thomas is a top competitive swimmer. And so Leah Thomas then is... Uh, has the ability, wants to keep swimming, and Leah Thomas, who as a man swam very competitively at the University of Pennsylvania as a man, and is now is swimming as a woman, and is going to also be really competitive. And so the question is, how do we manage that? Like, how do we manage? And so, what's the issue of fairness that people are talking about from your perspective? What are you hearing? A lot of it is of the fact of um, that Leah went from being kind of a, just many, one of the many of the swimmers to being in the female, like the top swimmer. So uh -huh. many of her races, she's finishing well ahead of everyone. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And many people are attributing that to the fact of the testosterone level in her body and how her body type as um, how t testosterone affects the body in a man, mm -hmm. it has many differences in women. In women, and so that that's causing a lot of unfairness in the playing field. There's no like equality there. So here's here's what I've discovered about, but like this makes for a great swimmer, right? You want to you want to have greater height, right? So we so stand up really fast. So women, people who make it to your level are going to be five inches. As a woman, you're five inches taller than the average woman. Okay, and you're tall, right? How tall are you? Uh, about five ten. Okay, and I'm five eleven. Okay, so yeah. all right, and and you're going to have okay, you can sip, you're going to have a larger wingspan. Like, do you, is your wingspan large? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But this is key, right? Because it's not just how tall you are that determines your wingspan and the longer, slightly longer torso. And that means yes. what for you as a swimmer? Because you probably have bigger lungs, right? Yeah. Larger lung capacity. Yes. Longer yeah. torso. Okay. Uh, shorter legs than average than you would. So go back to your height, right? Stand up really fast. So given your height, right? You're going to have an advantage if your legs, you, we expect your legs to be like a certain length compared to your torso and your height on average, right? If we just mm -hmm. picked every woman out in class who was like 5'10", if we picked 100 women who were 5'10", but if you have a slightly um, longer torso and slightly shorter legs and your legs are really powerful because clearly your legs are really powerful, mm -hmm. you're going to have a little bit of an advantage. Like if you're like, a, have, if you shrunk like a half inch off your legs, for example, that matters at your level, right? Because it's about tenths of a second. Yep. Um, large your hands and feet. Are your hands large? Here, there's hang on. Average. Uh, okay, wait. Here, hang on. <laughs> you're, they're as large as mine, but I have small <laughs> hands. My wife has really huge hands, but they're pretty good size for, okay. <laughs> Do you need large feet, large hands? Why do you want large hands? Large hands? It yeah. adds to the distance of your arms, so it's further reached to the wall. Further reach and into the wall. Okay, wider go. hands means more grab space when okay. you're going through the water. Grab space going through the water, so you, got, you want that. And you want yeah. big, like really wide wings because you want to... You want the length to the wall, yeah. Okay. Um, and shoulder, and you want broad really shoulders. Strong, <laughs> broad shoulders and strong. Look at your shoulder. I mean, you're strong, right? Like yeah, shoulder and ankle flexibility. There, yep. Got to have that. Got to have that. So if you have all these things, if if we pick out, if if you were to pick out, like, if if we had a hundred ten-year-old girls, <laughs> and we picked them out, and we picked the ones out 
it, it, if we measured all these things on them, you'd be able to, we'd, we'd be able to say, this one's probably going to have an advantage in the pool. You'd be able to make some judgments, yeah. Yeah, this one's probably going to have a disadvantage, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you have a biological advantage as a woman who has a body type that's really, but also you've been working out. You, you've been, how long have you been swimming? My entire life. <laughs> like when did you start? Competitively, uh, my earliest memories is five years. Five years? Yeah, five-year-old. Whoa, okay. Leah Thomas started at five, too. Yeah. So, okay, so you, and so you, so you have a biological advantage because of your body type, you mm -hmm. know? Okay, so, but in the end, this, I forget who said this, it was some sports person. You probably heard yeah. this a lot, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. And what's that mean for you? The rest is 90% mental is a big part. Swimming, I feel like, is a very mental sport. So you can build, in any sport really, you can build up your muscles, you can build up the body type that you need, but if you don't mentally commit to and everything you need to do, it's kind of hard. So the 90% mental is a big part. It's, so no matter what, you could have, you'd be the most ready to go, but in the end you get to the, to the, to the meet or the race and you're not there, you're not... Mm. It's not going to happen for you. No. Which is why some, have you ever had run, done a race where you just blew your own time out of the water and you've never been able to meet that again? Oh, yeah. Already now we're starting on this question of some people have biological advantages in the sport of swimming. Mm -hmm. So anybody who looks like that doesn't mean they're going to be a great swimmer, but it means they have a biological advantage. So if I'm going to bet my money on, on it, I'm going to bet my money on somebody who has a body type like this. Mm. Yeah. Right. So the man, men swimmers are on average five inches taller than the average man and women five inches taller. But we don't complain about that biology. No one says that it's unfair for you. No. To be a swimmer because that's just what you're born with. Mm -hmm. And the degree to which you built up muscles, you built those muscles. You yes. didn't take drugs to build them. No. <laughs> we measure testosterone by nanomoles per liter. Okay. Sure. <laughs> men, it's eight to 13. <laughs> And women is 0.5 to 3. Mm -hmm. So what has to happen in order for Leah Thomas to, to, to build a certain amount of fairness? The testosterone level needs to come down because it has a large effect on your muscle capability and your body. So, so, we, ha so we, have to has we have to get her testosterone levels down to a place where it's like tying a weight to her ankle. I, I kind of said it already in the beginning of class. You know, these things are, we're just trying to get it right. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we're, we're all, and when you and I were first talking about this, you're like, listen, I support Leah Thomas, right? Mm -hmm. Like you really support trans rights. Yes. And I do too. And so do so many people. We're just trying to get it right. Mm -hmm. And Leah Thomas wants to get it right. Like she has said very clearly, I don't want to, be at a disadvantage, like I want to do this well, I want to do it right, I want to feel good about it. If I win a race, I want to feel like I really deserve to win the race. Yeah. But in order to do that, we got to bring her testosterone levels down. And so and swimming, they first said, okay, um, we got to have it down to below, to below 10 for one year. But then most recently, and that's what she did, mm -hmm. but most recently because of this, now, the a, is it AEU swimming or USA swimming? USA swimming. Yeah, yeah they've said, okay, we're going to go down to five nanomoles mm -hmm. for three years. In order for a person to compete at that level, you got to bring it down to, uh, for, in order for a woman who was born as a man, in order for the woman to compete as a woman, mm -hmm. we're going to bring those nanomoles down to five for three years. And once you do that, then you can compete. How's that sound? Like, what, do you, what, are you, what are people saying? Like, what are other swimmers saying? It, it sounds at least a little bit more reasonable from a female perspective, I think, uh -huh. especially from 10, just because we attribute so much to the difference between men and women to the testosterone. Mm -hmm. And if you're saying you want to level the playing field, then there needs to be a significant drop in that for there to be the fairness. So mm -hmm. it, but one of the problems here is that I'm seeing, uh, so this is a good thing, mm -hmm. right? But we, but we now did it with her. And but this is a case of, we have like a, a test case of two people, but we need more. You know, I'm assuming that four or five years from now, we're going to have 
zero in on this measurement and we're going to know exactly where we need those nanomoles in order to make it more fair. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, we hope. I mean, yeah. You, you hope that you get that kind of ability to compare and study, I guess. Yeah. That, but, but I think on the first happen. time around, when they first said it's got to be below 10, they were just mm -hmm. shooting in that the dark. That was, I think, just a gut reaction, get a number out there to appease people. Yep, to, yeah, to appease people. In order to really, no, to, but to not just to appease people, to make it fair. Mm -hmm. Like, let's try to make it fair, so we're going to bring it down, but now where are we going to go? And I think this is the thing, this is what we're struggling with, right? In the meantime, however, if, if Leah Thomas is outperforming people like you, in the meantime, in these intervening years, it's not fair to you, no. right? No. <laughs> yeah, because you're, it will be fair like for the next case in three or four or five years, but for you right now, it's not really entirely fair. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons is because she also had the advantage, advantage of, um, of being, of living life developing muscles and bones and so on with all that testosterone. So that's already part of mm -hmm. it, right? Yes, I was reading something recently about the whole, she got the chance to go through the male puberty, essentially, yep. which yep. means she has larger muscles, larger lungs, different body type in general, which makes it a little bit easier in the female playing mm -hmm. side. But now in fairness, though, there are a lot of men who would try to swim at a competitive level who you would, who they don't have the body type and you would just blow them out of the water. Five years old, started competing at five years old, mm -hmm. right? Um, started taking HRT, hormone replacement therapy, mm -hmm. it, in 2019, and then competed in 2022. And those are some times. Um, did not recently compete in any long distance swims, right? Yeah. Just, yeah. So you see went from... I don't know that, I've heard different things about being ranked like 554th or 450th or whatever, I don't really um, know. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that is. Yeah, what does that mean, by the way? Well, there's different things. It could be 500 in the country, it could be in um, USA Swimming. Um, but presumably as a man was still a good swimmer. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that would still, I mean, it'd be relatively in the middle. Was, yeah, with those, with, but with those rankings, it's not going to make it to the Olympics. No. But it's a good swimmer. Mm -hmm. But then we come down as a woman and suddenly like, whoa, 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 mm -hmm. right? Yep. So that would seem to me to say, hey, you got to like, I don't know, right? But if I had to guess, I would say down the road, we're going to dial up that, that HRT a little bit because mm -hmm. we've got to dial down the testosterone and dial up the HRT because looking at those numbers, it's, there's an, it's been a kind of an unfair adjustment. And again, I think, I, I think what I would say is that what I know of all my friends and colleagues and activists in, in also in the trans community is like, they really do want to get it right. It's just that you, you can't get it right the first time. It's like so many things, right? We want to figure it out, but it's, not, it's hard. This is not a Republican or Democrat issue. I'm surprised at the degree to which Republicans and Democrats really agree on, on trans, all, all things related to trans issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most people are very supportive, and most people want to try to figure it out. And we do. And um, I have colleagues who, I mean, I know people who are just really, really, really super conservative in lots of things. But, you know, like on this issue, they just feel really like let children be children and let's let's work it out. We'll figure it out.